Hello, my name is Reverend Tom Stanley and I am the senior minister here at Central Christian Church in Enid, Oklahoma. I want to welcome you to our online ministry. During these profoundly challenging times, it is important to remain safe, socially distanced, and wear a mask whenever possible. My hope and prayer for you and your family is that you will remain safe and healthy and blessed by God. Our online ministry here at Central Christian Church is growing. We are touching the lives of thousands of people every single month. Our goal is to share the gospel and good news of Jesus Christ, our love for our neighbors, and the welcome of God to everyone. If you're new to our ministry, please check out our website at centralenid.org and our Facebook page. A completely new website is in the works and will be rolling out in the next few weeks, so don't be surprised if it changes suddenly. If you would like to join this fellowship and partner your ministry with ours, we would welcome you with open arms. All are welcome in our ministry, fellowship, and worship. If you would like to support the ministry of this place as we change lives of people in Enid, in Oklahoma, and around the world, there, there are several ways that you can give. You can connect to our website and give online. You can download the Givelify app and find Central Christian Church of Enid and donate that way. We also have the ability to take ACH deposits, which are directly withdrawn from your bank account. You can use your credit card on the website or on the Givelify app. If you have questions about how to support the ministry of God here at Central, please don't hesitate to call our office. My deepest prayer is that God will bless you and make God's face to shine down upon you and grant you peace today. Have a blessed day.
Amen. Good morning. Good morning and welcome. We are glad you're here. The opportunity to worship, to celebrate, and to be present with each other is something I don't think I will ever take for granted again. Grateful you are here. On the back of your bulletin are a number of announcements and a number of prayer requests and other useful information. A couple that I want to share with you that did not make it into the bulletin. At 2 p.m. in the chapel today is going to be a recital. The teacher is Cynthia Smith. Molly Birchall is one of her students, and so that will happen at 2 p.m. in the chapel today if you would like to enjoy what I'm sure is going to be some amazing piano. I'm looking forward to it. And Monday, we've got Valerie's Bible study via Zoom. At 5.30, the deacons are going to have a 30-minute session of deacon training. So if you can be here and you're a deacon, we would love to have you. At 6 o'clock, a group of us is getting together to discuss Memorial Day and the service that we're going to have that day. So I changed that time, Mickey, to 6 o'clock instead of 5.30 because I was double booked. Uh, Tuesday, 6 o'clock, uh, the Gospel of Mark Bible study will continue via Zoom. If you need that link, please make sure you talk to Candy. She'll get that out to you. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are going to be busy. It is Tri-State. If you're looking for an opportunity to make a couple of cookies or volunteer to help, we could certainly use your help. Just grab me after service is over and I'll be glad to point you in that direction. We're going to have a relatively small crowd on Wednesday, two full bands and a bunch of solos, trios, and duos, but, Wednesday, but Thursday and Friday are going to be full days. We could certainly use a couple of extra hands if you're interested. Um, any other announcements I might have missed? All right. Seeing none, we will proceed on. I am glad you're here, and if you would stand and join me in our opening prayer, I would be profoundly grateful. Stand as you are able. Holy One, we're grateful to be in your house today. Humbled by the gifts you pour out in us, humbled by your presence here with us, humbled by the love and grace you share with us each and every day. Today, as we gather in your name, prepare our hearts to hear from you today. Prepare our hearts to engage deeply your word, to hear the truth of Scripture, the truth of Him and prayer Grow and deepen our relationship with you today. Help us to be better present with you today. And help us to be your image in the world today, tomorrow, this week, next month. Because each day we depend on you more. We are better able to love and share your grace and your mercy. So help us today. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay? Please join me in the call to worship. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord leads us, loves us, and protects us. Even though the darkest valleys, God's love endures. We will celebrate and worship today because this is the day that the Lord has made. For beauty of meadows, for grandeur of trees, for flowers of woodland, for creatures of seas, for all who created and gave us to share, we praise you, Creator, extolling your care. As of beauty received at your hand as creatures 
to hear your most urgent command. We turn from our wasteful destruction of life, confessing our failures, confessing our strife. Sure. Acts 4, 5 through 12. The next day, their rules, rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Capias, John, Alexander, and all who were the highest priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand by in their midst, they inquired, By what power, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, Rulers of the people and elders that we are questioned today because of good deeds done to someone who was sick and there was how the, ask how the man had been healed. Let it be known to all of you, to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is. The stone was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. All right, kiddos, let's talk for a minute. I even brought you a microphone so you can talk. What's up? Good to see you. Oh, that's very pretty. I'm sorry your shoe fell off. Good morning. It's nice to see you guys again. Yeah, it's good to see everybody. So, now that I have all of these wonderful young people up here with me, now is the perfect time to remind you all that we are looking for children's Sunday school teachers. As you can see, there are children, and they need a Sunday school teacher. Actually, they need, they need probably three or four Sunday school teachers so that we can take turns, right? Yes, ma'am. There's one more kid that hasn't. That's okay. That's okay. So, if you're interested in being one, a Sunday school teacher for these young people, see me or Mickey after service because we need them. We really want to roll out a brand new children's uh, curriculum beginning either the first or second week of May, and I would love to have a couple of more volunteers. So anyway, kiddos, today I had a, I had a moment, and that moment was, duh, how'd you forget that? You know, that, that, you know those moments where you forget something that you've always known, and you go, wow, how did I miss that? Yeah. Um, I forgot some one easy question. Yeah, it was doubles, and oh. I forgot it. And I'm like, how did I, how did I forget that? That's exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. You forget something you've always known. Yeah, um, Have you done that on a test? You know, you study, you study, and you get ready to take the test, and then you get there and you can't remember the answer. Um, and then after it's over, you go, duh, I knew that. Um, I've never done it on a test, really. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. I used to do it all the time. I've, I've done it on spelling tests. Oh, yeah. Well, spelling, spelling tests and I did not get along. We still don't get along. That's what Microsoft Word is for. <laughs> and, a, and a program called Grammarly. Okay. So what we're going to talk to the adults about today is it's all about relationships. Our Bible all of the stories that Jesus tells, all of the stories from the Hebrew Bible are all about how to be in relationship with God and how to be in relationship with each other and how to repair those relationships when they're broken. I thought it was just about God. You thought it was just about yeah. God? Well, it is about God. It's about how to be in relationship with God, right? 
I thought you were going to say how to get along with each other. But then well, that's said, part of it, isn't it? Yeah. You got to get along with each other. That. Yeah. But <laughs> it is, it's about how to be, how to get along. We'll use that word, how to get along with each other. Because sometimes when we're in church together, we accidentally hurt each other's feelings. Because when we're at church, we tend to let our guard down. And we tend to let, we experience things differently. Because when you're out at the grocery store, if somebody cuts you off or says something mean, you, you, you might get mad about it. But it doesn't generally hurt your feelings. But here in this place, something hurtful could be said that really wouldn't, would roll off your back like water off a duck normally. But sometimes, especially here, it hurts our feelings because we're expecting our church family to love us. And sometimes they say things that hurt our feelings. It's all about relationships. Now, we'll get to the rest of that in a minute. But for you guys, you guys are going to follow TJ because TJ is going to take you to worship and wonder here in just a second. But first, I'm going to pray for you because I want you all to have the best relationships with mom and dad, with each other, and with God. Because kids are amazing. And they get the opportunity to not only forgive, but to move on in a way that adults don't. Because you guys live in the moment. And you guys move on from hurt feelings in a way that Adults tend not to, and that's amazing. So we'll get to the rest of that. Yes, ma'am. I have something right there. What is it? Is it an ouchie? Or am I bleeding? That could be too. Yeah, I think you were just bleeding. I probably scratched it. Thank you for telling me, though. So let's pray. God, I'm grateful for these kids. I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with them, to love them, and to minister to them. We ask your blessing on them as they go to worship and wonder. We ask you to bless their relationships with their friends, with their parents, and with all of the other children they meet every day. Let us learn from their ability to forgive, to forget, to be present with each other. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, you guys are going to follow TJ. We'll see you later, okay? <laughs> On the back of your bulletin is our concern list. A couple of them we need to remember. I got to see John Ingram out at... Uh, the home show, he was doing well, so he continues to recover. We continue to pray for Irene Green, saw her this week. She is doing pretty well, seems to pretty well be pain-free, but the cancer is growing, and so that's a challenge. Um, I got to spend quite a bit of time with Mary Ruth Cooper this week. I haven't seen her in a year. She texted me and reminded me she hadn't had communion in a year. So we got that fixed this week. She misses you all and, tell, and sends her love. Continue to pray for Brent Chambers. His scan that he was supposed to have this week got delayed, but he continues to feel good. And you told me he lost 60 pounds. And, is, and according to his mother, he's far too thin. Uh, we continue to pray for Jennifer, Judy Jordan's daughter, Siler Justice, Sam and Sandra's daughter, Mike Wagner, who has leukemia, Fig's grandson, Giovanni, who has a really cool cast, I hear. And we continue to pray for Randy and his recovery, although he texted me this morning and said he is doing very well and expects to be back with us next week. Are there others you would add to this prayer list? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we're grateful today that you know us, that you love us, that you are present with us. 
As we turn to you in prayer in this moment, we lift up all of these names we have called to you, all of these names on our concern list. We seek your presence with them. We seek your healing on their behalf. And we give thanks for these that are recovering. We give thanks for the work of your hand. We give thanks for your presence. We pray for the doctors and nurses and therapists that will care for these and continue to treat these that we love. We pray that you will grant them wisdom and grace and mercy. We pray that you will strengthen all of these that we have called by name to you. And as we pray the prayer your Son taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Wow. Thank you, choir. I hope your worship so far has been a blessing. We are joined by a number of people online, and I offer you greetings as well. I want to turn our attention towards God's Word today. I want to share with you what God has laid on my heart over the last month to share some truths that gave me pause. And a couple of those moments, like I shared with the kids, are probably, you're going to go like, well, duh, how did you forget that? But sometimes we do. I'm fairly sure that you have heard me say that we are made to be in relationship with God and with each other. We are created with the need to be in relationship with each other. So when I say that our relationship with God, the church, our relationships with each other, even the ministries we're called to serve, are all about relationships, this should not surprise anyone. But it might. Mickey and I were talking about the welcome table and resuming in-person dining this past week. And I told her, the part I missed the most, I think I've said this three times, the part I missed the most is the opportunity to get to talk to our guests, to pray with our guests, to just be present with our guests. It is all about relationships. The food is secondary to the relationships that are built, even though the food is wildly important. I would argue that our Bible, the entire narrative of it, is narrative of it, is all about relationships, how to have them, how to grow them, encourage them, and how to repair them when they've been broken. Because that will happen. We are vulnerable to each other when we covenant to be church together. As I said with the kids down here, we keep our guard up most of the time when we're out in public. Things that would be hurtful tend to roll off our back as if water off a duck's back. But not here. Here, we are vulnerable. Because we love each other, because we care for each other, and because we expect that in return. So as I was pondering all of this today, I happened into my daily reading into the Ten Commandments in the book of Exodus. And as I began to read deeply into those, bo- into those Ten Commandments, I again pondered that wouldn't it be nice to have a list of do's and don'ts that just tell me how to exist. Now, and then as I had that fleeting thought, I realized that a magic list of do's and don'ts would last in me about five minutes. Because sooner or later, I would forget. Now, our siblings... The people of the Hebrew Bible turned this list of ten things of do's and don'ts 
into more than 600. You've heard me say that before. So for every one of these that God gave the people of Israel, they turned them into 60. How many of you want to try to obey 600 plus rules every single day? Anybody? Uh, Any takers? Come on. Somebody's got to be good at it. I am not. But as I read deeply into these Ten Commandments, I realized that each and every one of these commandments is about our relationship with God, our relationship with our siblings in faith, and our relations with our neighbors and family. Listen to these words. Hear what God said to the people of Israel about how to be in relationship not only with God, but with each other. And God spoke these words to the people of Israel. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, and you shall have no gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any image in any form of heaven or earth, beneath the earth or beneath the waters. You shall not bow down and worship them, for I am a jealous God. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. You shall remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days may you labor, but the seventh day you will reserve for the Lord. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, steal. Don't lie and bear false testimony against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's servants, your neighbor's animals, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. May God's word bless you today. May it be a light unto your path, and may it guide your relationships, not only with God, but with each other. The title of this sermon is, It's All About Relationships. As I was processing and planning this, I really wanted to name this sermon, It Just Doesn't Matter. Who remembers the movie Meatballs from the 1980s? I loved that movie. I love anything with Bill Murray. But in that movie, it's about summer camp, and I grew up going to summer camp in the 80s, so it spoke to me greatly. The director of this camp is listing a bunch of rules, the do's and don'ts of how to behave over this camping season. And finally, one of the counselors has had enough and begins to chant, it just doesn't matter. And quickly, they all take it up. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And they're chanting. And finally, the director gives up and moves on. It just doesn't matter. A moment of levity in a difficult situation. Perhaps we need that exact same moment of levity when we start talking about putting barriers between other people and God. For as long as I've been a part of the church, we've been talking about sin and we've been talking about do this, don't do that. I kid you not, when I was a teenager, we were all set to go to a concert and my youth minister said, no, you better not go see that person, he's bad. It's a concert, guys. He wasn't slaughtering goats and worshiping the devil on stage. He was singing music. But we were told not to go see him because that's bad. I'm going to say it again. It just does not matter. Now, before you get all excited, hear me out. What if we redefine sin... Rather than a list of do's and don'ts, what if we classify sin as anything that interrupts our relationship with God, which I know you've heard me say before, but we add anything that interrupts our relationship with our siblings in faith and any child of God. It's still pretty hard to live into, But, it just might change our views and how we act. So let's take a look at those Ten Commandments again, and let's look at them from that term of relationships. Don't worship any other god. 
That's all about relationship. God wants us to have a relationship with God. And anything that sunders or comes between us and God should be considered sin. Idols, the same way. What should be more important to us than our relationship with God? Absolutely nothing. God's name is holy, not a curse word. Again, all about relationships. As I was pondering this moment, I, 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 I really I began to look at it this way. Many of you are mothers. How about if I make the word mom a curse word? Because I can do it. I can put enough scorn and attitude into the word mom and make it not a happy thing. How many of y'all are going to be excited about that? I don't see any hands. So why would God be excited about us using God's name as a curse word? The Sabbath. An entire day to focus on building our relationship with God. Yep, it's all about relationships. Honoring your father and mother. This one's harder. I have a 17-year-old daughter with entirely too much attitude. With a mouth that it would do an alligator proud. Y'all have raised daughters, you understand. She and I were trying to discuss an, an issue yesterday. It very quickly devolved into shouting and crying and anger. She and I are very much alike. We get bowed up and excited, and when we get mad, we say our brain disengages and we say hurtful things. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes. But we have to do better. We have to respect each other, care for each other, love each other. It is all about relationships. And hear me, parents, it goes both ways. Yes, our children should honor their fathers and mothers, but we as parents need to honor our children and respect them, love them. And I know, I know, sometimes there are people out there who do not do that. And I am eminently grateful for every single foster parent out there who willingly loves other people's children, takes them into their home, and cares for them like they are their own. Got a message from one of my youth who happens to have amazing parents. I wished him a happy birthday. He has a twin sister. I wished them both happy birthdays. They're each in relationships. Uh, the, the girl is married. The boy is engaged. And he wrote to me as I wished them happy birthdays, Tom, you don't know what it means to me that you still care for me. You still reach out to tend me. I am eminently grateful for the time we shared together as youth and youth pastor. We as the church have an opportunity to love every child that crosses our path. The last couple, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't lie, steal, or even be jealous of what your neighbor has. Yes. It's all about relationships with God's other children. Any one of these would sunder a relationship in a terrible and painful way. Our faith, the church, everything we have calls us to love our neighbors as ourselves, calls us into relationship with others. And here we go. In the face of our relationship with God and the relationship we are supposed to have with others, nothing else matters. We have to be willing to lay down the things that and put aside the things that hurt our relationships not only with God but with God's children and love just like Jesus does. Love just like God does. 
And I know how hard that is. And it's something we have to live into every single day. Now, so far, I probably haven't said anything too outlandish you can, that you could probably get all excited about. Unless you're one of those that believes there is a list out there of do's and don'ts. And then, please understand, I'm not criticizing that belief. I'm not even making fun of that belief. I just happen to disagree. And since we're all disciples, I can do that. And so could you. But I want us to look at the way we view sin. Because I think if we look, about it, look at it in terms of relationships, it will change the way we live our lives. It will change the way we treat each other within these four walls and outside these four walls. It will change the way we live our lives. As I was leaving church last week, one of our church members stopped me, said he was profoundly grateful for the topic I was sharing, and it was timely and a challenging opportunity for the church. But he asked me a question that, that I knew the answer to immediately, but it, it challenged me a little bit. He asked me what I didn't share. I knew exactly what he was asking, and I, and I knew the answer I needed to give. But it's one of those hard topics that tends to hurt feelings and Sometimes, we have to be gentle about it. I told him that I thought this one thing that I didn't share went better with this week's service, this week's sermon, than last week's. I shared with you all last week that the politics of the moment have, have divided us, and that as, as an absolutely true statement, we the church must work very hard to avoid that division. We must love more and focus on what divides us less. However, if I take that thought to fruition in my life, the answer is that my politics are vastly less important than my relationship with each and every one of you. That my politics are exponentially less important than my relationship with God. For myself, I must lay my politics aside if they get in the way of my relationship with God and with my neighbors. As we were walking out, he said, Ow, you got me again. And really and truly, it doesn't even have to be something as big and personal as our politics. As I shared with the kids down here just a minute ago, it can be snippy comments about someone or the something, some reaction of frustration or of hurt or anger that will sunder our relationships here in this place with someone in our church family. even our own daughters. If you can't tell, I'm really preaching to myself at this point. We are called, created, made to be in relationship with God and with each other. For me, anything I do or say that disrupts that relationship is bad. Hurting someone with my words, my actions, should be just as abhorrent to me as any of those list of ten. Because they are based in God's love and the love of Jesus Christ that I am called to mirror each and every day, that I am called to live out in every moment. So here's my question. What in your life do you need to lay down because it's getting in the way of your relationship with God and with your siblings in faith? Because it's probably time to lay it down.
and love just like Jesus does. Would you watch this video? Jason, you have it right? <laughs> We were not created to live we stagnant were not lives. created to live stagnant lives. To be stuck. To be bound. stuck. Or bound. Broken. Or broken. We were created with a purpose. We were created with a purpose. A calling. A calling. A mandate. A mandate. A mission. A mission. Even in these uncertain times, Even that in these calling uncertain times remains that calling the same. Remains the same. To go into the world. To go into to make the disciples, world, to make disciples, to share the love, to share the Jesus, love of Jesus. This is the work of Easter. This is the, the work of Easter. Of God, the, the power of, of the God, resurrection, the power of the action. resurrection in action. What Jesus did has what changed Jesus us. did has changed made us. us a new creation made us a new given creation. us an unimaginable given hope. us an unimaginable grace hope. has taken root grace has taken mercy root. has flooded our soul mercy has flooded and our the promise souls. of eternity and the promise of eternity our has redefined our everything so why keep all that to ourselves so why keep all that to ourselves mm. it's time to put easter in motion it's time to put easter in motion to make a difference to make to a share difference, Jesus, to share the Jesus world around us, with the world around us. If your life has been changed, mm. if your life has been changed, it's time to get to work. It's time to get to work. Our challenge is to live out that love of Easter morning each and every day. Would you pray with me? Holy and amazing God, we are grateful for the word that you have shared with us today. Grateful for the word that teaches us how to be in relationship with you, how to heal our brokenness, how to heal our broken relationships with our siblings. Teach us to better love to better be your image in the world. To better be present with each other. To forgive and lay down those things that separate us. In the precious and holy name of your Son. Amen. All who hunger and gather gladly, hymn number 419, we will sing. relationships. As we come to this time where we offer ourselves to God, I was listening to Karen talk about worship and wonder, because not every child that goes to worship and wonder has a quarter or a dollar to put in the offering plate. She said, we teach them to take their heart and offer it to God. More profound words I have never heard. So I invite you to offer what God has given you. Offer all that you are 
to God this morning as we take the offering. Stand as we sing the doxology together. Heavenly Father, thank you for sharing your only Son with all who believe in your name. Through his resurrection, you have given great grace to us all. May we share the world of eternal life with others so our joy may be complete. May these offerings reflect the grace of our risen Lord as we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's all about relationships. You are invited to this table in God's name. You are invited to be present at this feast where God shares God's Son with us. You are invited to deepen and strengthen your relationship with God around this table. So come, feast. Celebrate and remember that God loves you and God accepts you, warts and all, bruises and all. We are loved. On that last night, Jesus was together with the disciples before the cross. He took bread, he broke it, he gave thanks. He said, take and eat. This is my body, and it will be broken for you. After they had eaten, he took a cup, he gave thanks, he blessed it, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. As often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shared the cup and bread in the upper room. And this morning, renew this blessing at your table. May the Lord's Supper fill us with fresh awareness of your Holy Spirit as we pray in your name. Amen.
as we take the bread today, we pray, we celebrate, and remember that God invited us to this feast. May the bread and the body it represents renew us and help us to better be God's image in the world. As we take the cup together, we proclaim that we are God's children and that we will love just as God does. If you need a moment of prayer, I, Mac, or Kay would be glad to do that with you. If you would know this one named Jesus, we would love to share. If you would partner your ministry with this place, we welcome you with open arms. Let's stand and sing, let there be peace on earth together. Let it begin with us as we go forth and are God's image in the world today, an image of love, of grace, and mercy. Go in the power of Jesus' name. Amen.